Hey, it's Gabe here. I want to thank you personally for checking out our YouTube channel and I want to invite you to click the subscribe button so that each weekend's message will automatically show up in your feed so that you can check it out. With that being said, we want to jump into today's message. Come on, I need somebody to give it up for those that have served our country. Come on, you can do better than that. For those that have served our country and that are a big part of why we are able to stand here and sit here and have freedom to do what we're doing. Come on, we just want to say thank you. If you're here today and you have served in any, in any capacity, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. We want to say as people, as a church, thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. Um, I know a lot of times we take for granted. Can we just be real for a moment? A lot of times we take for granted what we have because somebody was willing to go fight for it. And somebody was willing to stand in the gap. And somebody was willing to lay down their life. And somebody was willing to go somewhere that they might not have wanted to go to say, no, I'm going to stand up for what we are as a country and who we are as a country. And we are so incredibly thankful for every sacrifice, for every act of service. And we honor you today. Uh, I want to remind you again, this coming Saturday, we are excited. The ladies conference is coming up this Saturday beginning at 8 a.m. You want to get registered for that if you haven't already. It's only $25 to be a part of that, and it's going to be a great time for all of you ladies. And then uh, we have, for everyone that serves on a team, so if you serve in any capacity in our church uh, on a team, then we have on December the 8th, we have our Christmas, our team Christmas party that we're going to be doing, and we're doing ugly sweater. Come on, somebody. And we need to find the ugliest sweaters, Christmas sweaters, I am already going to be on the hunt. You know you can go to any store right now, and there is Christmas stuff everywhere. Come on. Anybody excited about the holidays? <laughs> about, it's always, I love asking that question because it's always like a mixed response. You know, some people are like, yeah, you know, you're like me, and you think, yes, I'm so excited. The holidays are finally here. And then some of you are like, oh, my gosh, can it be January already? Uh, we're excited about everything that we have going on and that you can be a part of and what God's going to do during this holiday season. But I wanted to put that out there December the 8th, if you want to mark your calendar, if you serve on a team, we're going to be gathering just for some food and fellowship and uh, just have a great time together. So uh, today is the conclusion of a series that we have been in called Simple Life. And we have been talking, if you have been here at, at any point during this series, or maybe you've been listening on the podcast or you watched online you know that we have been talking about four areas, and today we're going to finish up. We're talking about the fourth area of where there was this survey done, and all of these people that responded, all of their responses could be summed up into four areas that really they were crying out for, and I think many of us are as well, simplicity in some of these areas. And it was time. We talked about time in a message called Killing Time. We talked about relationships in regaining relationships. Last week, we talked about money. Money, come on, if you weren't here last week, some of you are like, whoo, we, we missed the right one, babe. <laughs> I'm glad we came to church today. We talked about money and uh, how, really how God sees money in a message that we called Save the Ship. And I would encourage you to go back and listen to that if you haven't caught that one. Uh, I think it'll be a blessing to you. And then the fourth area that people uh, said they needed simplicity and they needed help in was the area of their relationship with God. And so today, as we end this series, we're going to be talking about our relationship with God. And I've titled this message, if you're taking notes or if you're on the Bible app, you can get the message notes on there and take notes online or on your phone. Uh, this message is, is titled Forward Motion. Come on, look at your neighbor. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them forward motion. Say, you need to move a little closer. Come on, tell them like you mean it. Some of y'all are like, I don't know what is this preacher telling us to do, talking to somebody. You got to talk back to me. I preach better when you talk back to me. Amen. Forward motion. And if we were to go around the room today, I bet there would be many of us that would say something like this. We believe in God, but many of that, that we would say we're a Christian. But if we were honest, we would probably say that our relationship with God isn't what it should be. Or we could even word it this way, that I believe in God, 
I'm a Christian, but my relationship with God, there's got to be more to this. There's got to be something more to this. It's not where I even want it to be. Maybe there are some of you sitting in the room today, and you're like, I want this kind of a relationship with God. But it's, but it's not there. <laughs> I, I, I believe in God. I've given my life to Jesus, but there is the relationship thing is a struggle for me. And here's something that one person said that I thought really can sum all of this up for us today, where we can find ourselves in the survey. One of the responses that came back, this person said, I say I believe in God. I say that God should be the most important priority in my life. I claim that God has sent his son to die for me, but I somehow can't make time for him. And then this person said, no, I take that back. I don't make time for him. What is wrong with me? See, here's the problem. This is not point number one, but this can be point number half if you want, if you want to write this down. The problem and the starting point for many of us is we are waiting until we can find time to invest in our relationship with God. And can I tell you something? You will never be able to find time to do it until you make time to do it. So some of y'all, you could just leave right now and you got everything you need for today. You're like, you know what? That's it right there. I just need to make time. You're, you're not going to be able to find time. Time is not just going to show up in your calendar. <laughs> you're not going to wake up tomorrow and be like, I have so much time. This is incredible. I love how much time I have. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to make time. You're going to have to make it a priority. Make it a priority. Nearly 90% of people surveyed felt that it was important for them and their families to have a spiritual foundation, but most of them said they weren't making enough room in their lives for God. And for many of us, there's a big discrepancy between our desire and our reality. <laughs> I'm already preaching. See, for many of us, there is a huge gap between what we want and what we say we want, and where we're actually living at, and what's actually going on in our lives, between our reality and our desire. For many of us, there's a big discrepancy between saying that God is our priority and actually making Him our priority. And we want a closer relationship. I think there are many of us today that want a closer relationship with God, but it's a struggle to make it a priority. And it reminded me, the reason, the title for this message came from, I don't know how many of you, back in like the, you know, the punk rock days, you know, when I was growing up and, and the, the music was so fast, like, I don't know how they were even playing the drums, just, you know, just, I mean, it was so upbeat. And there was a band called Reliant K that I used to listen to. Come on, anybody ever heard of Reliant K? About three people in the room. All right. There was a song back in the early 2000s that was called Forward Motion. And I just jotted down some of the lines because it, for some reason, the Lord just brought this to my mind when I was preparing this message. And here's some of what it says. Like one line in the verse says, I've been banging my head against the wall. Anybody ever felt like you've just been banging your head against the wall? I just want a closer relationship. And you come to church and you're like, you're pumped up when you leave church. You're like, whoa, we're going to do this thing. Going to get closer to God. And then you wake up on Monday and you're like, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of tired. Just kind of tired. I don't know, you know, maybe next week is my week. Maybe, maybe 2020 is when it's coming, you know, just waiting for, whoo, just got to get through Thanksgiving, got to get through Christmas, got to get through the New Year's Eve celebration, and then everything will get better and I'll get on track. <laughs> this is what many of us are thinking right now. We head into November, we're like, whoo, this new year is going to be, can I tell you today, there's still about 50 days left in 2019 that you can make the best of and get closer to God and take something better with you into 2020. That's free today. But it says, I've been banging my head against the wall. And then, and then part of the, the, the chorus, I love this. It says, I struggle with forward motion. We all struggle with forward motion because forward motion is harder than it sounds. Some of us want to move forward in our relationship with God. And we say it, and somebody says it, and we're like, whoo, I know, that's right. I need to do that, and we're excited about it. And then for some reason, it's harder than it sounds. 
and I want to help us, I want to try to break it down a little bit today and give us some things that what I think this looks like in our lives. Before we do that, though, uh, I want to remind us of what our theme verse is for this series one more time, one final time. John 10, 10 says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus has come, to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you over." flow. Can I just tell you that I know we're ending with the topic of God, but everything that we have talked about up to this point starts with what we're talking about today. And so if, if you want to know, oh, I've been trying this other stuff, you need, to, you, need to, you need to say, okay, it starts with what we're talking about today, and then all of the other stuff flows out of that. The most important thing that you can do is work on your relationship with God, because everything flows out of that. How you manage your time flows out of your relationship with God. What your relationships look like flow out of your relationship with God. What your money ah, looks like flows out of your relationship with God. And so this is really the starting point. And the ultimate fulfillment in life is an intimate relationship with God. But here's the reality in most of our lives is that we struggle to move closer to God because in order to move closer to God, it requires us to change some things. It requires us to change some habits. How many of you know that we are creatures of habit? <laughs> you are a creature of habit. Oh, I got no. No, I like to mix it up, I like to change it up. No, we could record you for three days. And I promise you, you probably do a handful of things over and over and over in the same order. You probably do the same thing every morning. I know I do. You get up, then you're going to do this, 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 then you're going to run out the door, then you're going to get in your car, then you're going to go to work. We're creatures of habit. We drive the same path to work every day. Some of y'all can drive to work with your eyes closed. Some of you do. And you get there and you wonder, how did I get here? Did I stop? Anybody ever had that moment where you arrive somewhere and you're like, did I stop at that stop sign? I don't even remember if I stopped at that stop sign because we're creatures of habit. We eat the same types of food every week. Come on, some of us are like, we need to eat better. And then this week, you eat the same thing that you ate last week because it's hard to make a change. We become creatures of habit, habit. We watch the same shows every week. How many of you got like your three TV shows that every week you're gonna you're not gonna miss? You're not gonna miss you're not gonna miss your three TV shows. Oh, I'm gonna say something that's gonna bother you. You'll miss your time with God, but you won't miss those three TV shows that you guys set on your DVR. Oh, oh can we just be can we be real today? We're creatures. Of habit. We're creatures of habit. And some for some of us, it's, it's hard. We have work habits. We've got eating habits. We've got leisure habits. And for many of us, we're not moving closer to God because we haven't broken enough habits to have time for Him. For some of us that we want, I, 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 you want a better relationship with God. You want to be closer to God. But you just haven't you just haven't rearranged enough things in your life to make it a priority. Maybe you haven't changed some habits or broken some habits to actually make time in your schedule for God. And so how do we break these habits or how do we accomplish this and these things that need to be broken and begin new ones that really draw us closer to God? I, I think it, it goes back to this statement that many of us have heard, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. How do, you, how do you draw closer to God? Just one step at a time. One step at a time. Some of us are frustrated because we want, um, we want it to just happen just in, in an instant. It's like, I read my Bible today. I prayed today. I did all the things today. I don't feel any close. Like, okay, take another step. Like, keep taking another step. Keep taking another step. One step at a time. So what does it look like to move toward God? Today I want to give you five simple steps to help you consistently move toward God. And, and I really think 
um, just kind of what this looks like is where we're going today. What does, what does it look like to move toward God in your life? To say, you know what, from this day forward, I'm going to move toward God. What does that movement look like? Here's number one, prayerful. Prayerful. Uh, when you, when you want to be closer to someone, you have conversations with them. There's probably not anybody in the room today that would be like, you know, I'm really close to them. We just never talk. We just have a great relationship, and we never say anything to each other. We just never. We, we, we're just so close. We don't have any conversation. We just feel so close. Conversation is something that brings closeness. And so let me ask you, do you have conversations with God? Do you have conversations with God? Have you ever read a book or some books about prayer? And when you, <laughs> and when you finish reading the book, you're like, wow, I feel worse. <laughs> because this person that wrote this book, it seems like they know how to pray figured out and that's the I, I struggle with praying I don't even know what to say I just feel and you read this book and you're like ah, I just I want to be better in this area they know how to pray and I struggle to pray I want to as we go through these I'm going to give you just one or two uh, scriptures as we go through each one to kind of help us today and in, in this idea of prayerful, that movement toward God looks like prayer. It looks like prayerful habits in your life. In Philippians 4, 6, just a simple verse that Paul wrote. He said, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him, I love this, every detail of your life. Here's what Paul says. Moving closer to God, it looks like conversation with God and telling Him everything. Every detail of your life, when you, instead of worrying about it, praying about it. Instead of worrying about it, taking it to God and saying, God, I'm, I'm worried about this and you know I'm worried about this. Will you take this? Will you just, just show me what to do? Will you guide me? Will you, will you give me the words to say? Will you... Will you do all this? And actually taking it to him and saying, you know what, God, I'm, t I'm bringing this to you because your word says not to be pulled in different directions, not to be worried about a thing, but to be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Telling him every detail of your life. We are to take everything to God in prayer. Every big thing, every little thing, every personal thing, every marriage thing, every work thing, every decision thing, every frustrating thing, every problem thing, everything. God cares so much about you that he wants you to talk to him about your life. And have you ever, have you ever found somebody that you felt like you could talk to? And you've been holding stuff in and you've been, you know, and you didn't really know what to do. And you found somebody and then you just, and you started talking about what was going on in your life. And you're, you know, we're trying to make this decision. Don't really know what to do. We're trying to do that. Can I just tell you that that's what God wants. That's what his desire is, is that you would come to him and say, this is what I'm concerned about. This is what I'm worried about. This is what's going on at work. This is what's going on in my marriage. This is what's going on with my kids. This is what's going on in all of these areas of my life. And I want to talk to you about it. I want to get your input on it. Come on, somebody. I don't want to just be doing my own thing and trying to figure it out on my own. I want to know what you have to say about this. And God wants to take all of your needs and all of your burdens and all of your worries and all of your cares because he cares for you. And we need to stop depending on our limited ability and start depending on the one who has no limit. I know for me, when I start to depend on me, it does not turn out well. It never turns out well because I'm limited. My knowledge is limited. My, my, my processing is limited. My thinking is limited. All of that is limited. But when I start to lean into God and start to move a little bit closer to God, the one who has no limits and knows everything from beginning to end and knew and is not surprised by what you're facing right now, is not surprised. I can, I can tell you something. 
whenever you go to God and you say, God, this is what I'm dealing with, God's gonna be like, not going to be like, oh, my me. I cannot believe that you're dealing with that. He knows the beginning from the end. He just He's inviting you to come to him every day and say, here's what's going on in my life. Here's what's going on in my life. I just, I want to tell you about it. Nothing moves congestion like prayer. We've been talking about this word congestion and how congestion is rarely ever a good thing. Nobody wakes up and says, ooh, just want some good congestion today. Just so some of us are dealing with it right now as the weather changes. I just want some good congestion right now. We don't say that. Prayer is something that moves congestion. <laughs> prayer does things in the spiritual realm that we'll never really even see is going on. But because we're taking it to God in prayer, or we're taking authority over things in our life, it moves things around. It activates things in a realm that we can't see. So prayerful. Here's number two, forgetful. Forgetful. Some of y'all are like, I got that one down. Forgetful. Uh, I don't know about anyone else in the room, but uh, this is a problem for me. And my wife would tell you. It's like, I forget the things that I want and need to remember. And the things that I'm like, I wish I could forget that. I can't forget it. I know I need to remember when my anniversary is. Come on, can we just be real for a moment? (laughs) And I'm pretty good about remembering that. I don't forget that. But some of y'all says that, oh, I like that. But there are things that I'm like, why can I not remember to do that? And I forget. And then three days go by and it's like, huh? I forgot again. I meant to do it. And I forgot. And then the things that I'm like, I wish that I could forget that memory or that thing or what it was like in the past. And I cannot seem to forget what I want to forget. But the things that I know I need to remember, I forget. But I want to submit to you today that in the way that we're talking about being forgetful, it's in a good way. It's in a good way. And I think that moving closer to God sometimes looks like forgetting. I love what Paul wrote in Philippians 3 and verse 13. You need to read Philippians. Philippians is a great book in the Bible for you to read. He says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I, say this word with me, forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Is it possible that some of the congestion you're experiencing in your life is because you cannot forget? Is it possible that there is something that is keeping you from moving one step closer to God, to really having an intimate relationship with Him, and it's because of something that you can't forget, or we could say it this way, something that you have never forgiven yourself for. And because you've never forgiven yourself for it, and you feel like you need to make yourself feel bad for what you did, you can't move out of that place. Can I just tell you today that God does not intend for you to keep beating yourself up over something that happened in the past or the way that you used to live your life or or something that didn't go your way or some decision, come on, somebody, that you made. But when you gave it to God and you said, you know what, I'm repenting, I'm turning around, I'm going the opposite direction, I'm going to start moving closer to God. Some, Some of us, we've got to forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves so that we can then Do what Paul says. And and this forgetting is a choice. (laughs) Paul said, "Here's, here's what I do. I forget all of the past. And I tie my heart to the future. I tie my heart to what's coming in the future. To the plans that God has for me. To the, to the place that God is taking me. To the ultimate goal. And I'm going to choose to forget when the enemy tries to bring it up again. Mm, nope. <laughs> We're not going there again. Because I choose to forget that. So that I can look forward to what it is that God has for me in the future. Are you with me today? 
Here's number three. So it looks like prayerful. It looks like forgetful. Here's number three, incremental. Incremental. I want to encourage you with some things today because we've already been talking about how we're, we're about to go into a new year and some of you are already thinking about goals for 2020 and vision for 2020 and what God's going to do in 2020 and what, what, you know, what your personal goals are for this next year and things like that. Can I encourage you with something? Um, there might be some of us that need to, in our, in our personal lives, in our relationship with Jesus, to set some incremental goals instead of getting frustrated when it didn't happen in two days. What does an incremental goal look like? Um, today, I took another step closer to God. Today, on my way to work, instead of blasting music, I took that seven minutes in my commute or 15 minutes or 25 minutes, and I talked to the Lord on my way to work instead of trying to drown out how I'm feeling. Instead of trying to drown out everything that I'm already worried about, I took a step. Um, our marriage hasn't been great, but instead of hoping that everything just gets resolved overnight, we started we started talking to each other and setting some time aside. We started uh, going out once a week. We go out and just spend time together. We we took a step. We took a step in our relationship with God. Some of us need to need to look at it as an incremental thing how and wake up in the morning what what step closer to God can I take today how can I get closer to God today how can I invest in my relationship with him again today because what I did yesterday was a step but today I need to take another one and so what can I do today that's going to move me closer to God that's going to that's going to help me to know what his heart is. That's going to help me to, 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 to want his will for my life and not for him to bless my will for my life. What is it that's going to move me a little bit closer to God today in taking a step? See, what happens for most of us, I'm afraid, is that when we start to feel like we're failing, we quit altogether. Anybody ever set a New Year's resolution? And it, it was like, woo, we're doing this. We're going to do this. And it was a big, it's a big thing. And you got to like the end of January. And you felt like you were already failing because you were going to pay off that debt this year. And then the car broke down. And the money you were going to put on that, now you got to spend to fix the car. You got to spend to fix the car. And because you feel like you're failing, you just quit altogether. And then you look back and it's like, wow, the thing that I said I was going to do, I never did because I felt like, what if, what if you, what if you set, I'm not telling you don't set the big goal, but what if you, if you set the goal, like, I want to be so close to God. I want to be so intimate with, with my heavenly father. And here's how I'm going to get there. Today, I'm going to read the word. Today, I'm going to pray. Today, I'm going to choose to, to not let the enemy bring up things from the past. Today, I'm going to take another step. Today, I'm going to take another step. Today, I'm going to take another step. I'm going to take another step. I'm going to read another proverb. I'm going to read the words of Jesus. I'm going to take another step. I'm going to pray about that decision. I'm going to tell God how I'm feeling. I'm not going to compare. I'm going to work on my relationships. I'm going to take another step. I'm going to move a little closer. And here's the great news. In James 4, 8, something that James wrote down at the beginning of this verse, this is what it says. This is so cool. It says, so come close to God, and God will come close to you. So every time, I like to picture it this way. It's like every time I take another step, God moves a little closer. And I get a little bit closer. And God moves a little closer. And I get a little bit closer, and God moves a little bit closer. And I do something else to invest in my relationship with him, and he moves a little bit closer to me. If we draw close or come close to God, he will come close to us. He wants to be close to you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Here's number four. Maybe what forward progress and moving closer to God looks like. It might look like immediate. Immediate. Uh, another common form of congestion in our lives is procrastination. 
Some of y'all, he just cussed in church. Procrastination. Maybe there's something that you need to move away from immediately so that you can move closer to God. Maybe there's something in your life that it's not an incremental thing. It's a decision thing. It's a, it's a moment that says, mm, this is an immediate decision that I need to make right now to cut this out of my life so that I can begin to move closer to God. It could be a sin. It could be a habit. It could be an addiction. It could be a relationship, not your marriage. You want to know if you married the right person? Look on your marriage license. This is not a marriage, this is not a marriage message. Some of y'all are looking at me like, you need to get off this right now, boy. <laughs> but maybe there's a relationship other than that that you need to give up because it's, it's, it's something that needs to be immediate that, that's keeping you from getting closer to God. I love this story in John chapter 8. And uh, I want to read about 11 verses. It says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning he was back again at the temple. A crowd gathered, soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned. I love that. I like to picture Jesus with a little attitude right there in that moment because he's trying to write something down in the dirt. You know, this is really important, what he's writing, and none of us really know what he wrote. Uh, Some people speculate on what it was that maybe Jesus was writing, and they keep on praying like, What are you going to do, Jesus? What are you going to do, Jesus? He's like, All right. All right. Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again, and then it's like, whew, drop the mic. And Jesus just goes back to writing in the dirt, right? You want an answer? Here's an answer. Drop it. Here you go. Then he stooped down and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, check this out, neither do I go and sin no more. Immediate. Go from this point. They don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. So go from this point and leave that. Leave that behind. Immediately, get up and leave that behind. Go and change your lifestyle right now. Go and make that decision right now. Go and stop doing what you've been doing right now. And maybe there's something even that that is in your life that you need to move toward immediately. There might be something you need to move away from, but maybe there's something that, that today God is saying, listen, Maybe there's something you need to move to. You need to move to reading the word daily immediately. Immediately. You need to move to, uh, to, to, to being around other believers in community immediately. You need, to, you need to do something that is bigger than yourself and begin serving other people immediately. You need to, you need to make this change immediately. See, when you begin to do the things that God created you for, you naturally begin to move closer to God. When you're doing the things that God has created for you to do, it has this way of moving you closer to God. Because because Jesus' heart is for me to serve other people, and so I'm serving other people, I'm moving closer to Him. I I wasn't created to do life alone, and so I'm, I'm in community with other believers, and I'm moving closer to Him. I'm doing something immediately. I'm making a decision today to do this and to begin moving forward. And here's number five of what forward motion, what moving closer to God might look like. And I want to bring the worship team back. Resilient. Resilient. Resilience and perseverance are required because you're not always going to feel like doing the things that bring a closer relationship with God. Anybody ever just not felt like? just me (laughs) 
anybody ever just not felt like it? I want to, but I don't feel like it. I want to, but I just don't make the decision to. I want to, but I just ah, I just don't feel like it. See, you're going to have to have perseverance and resilience, not even just for that. But sometimes there are going to be things come against you in your life. You start trying to draw closer to God, and the enemy doesn't roll over and just let you. We already read where his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he's trying to do. So whenever you start trying to take a step closer to God, I'm not promising you that it's going to be easy. Because chances are it won't. It may not be easy. You start taking a a step closer to God, you might have to have a little resilience in you. You take another step closer to God, you might have to have a little perseverance in you. You take another step closer to God, you might have to have a little little something inside of you, that, 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 that backbone that straightens up that says, I don't care what the enemy brings against me, I'm moving closer to God. And it doesn't matter what I feel like, it doesn't matter what I see, I'm moving Closer to God. I think that some of us may not be moving closer to God because we won't lead our feelings instead of letting our feelings lead us. And I want to read you this in 2 Corinthians as we end today in chapter 11. This is Paul. And he he writes this down, and I just want you to just picture this in your mind. He says, Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to warm me. If you don't think you're going to need some perseverance, if you don't think you're going to need some resilience, when you start taking a I would do you a disservice if I did not tell you that when you take a step closer to God and God takes a step closer to you, the enemy's going to try to step in between. And Paul says, I've been stoned. I've been beaten. I've been whipped. I've had my own people turn on me. I've had the outsiders turn on me. I've had people, I've been shipwrecked three times. I spent a whole day and a night just floating on the ocean, y'all. I mean, I've just, he's going through this list and I, I don't think it's Paul complaining. Paul saying, listen, I've been through some stuff. But I'm not going to stop serving my God. And I'm not going to stop reading his word. And I'm not going to stop praying. And I'm not going to stop showing up at church. And I'm not going to stop being around people that are going to encourage me. And I'm not going to stop serving. And I'm not going to stop doing the things that God's called me to do. And no matter what the enemy throws at me, I'm resilient. And I've got some perseverance. And so when I take another step, and he steps in front, I'm just going to move him out of the way and take one more. And when I take that step and he tries to step in front, I might just shove him a little bit harder this time and keep on moving. See, when you try to start moving closer to God, you have a desire in you to be closer to God. But when you start moving, if, if if, if, if you're not praying, if you're not making the decision to forget the past if you don't have some incremental steps that you know you can you can take to say I took another step today to get closer to him I took another step if you don't have some things that right now the Holy Spirit is showing you that this is an immediate thing right now you need to get this out of your life you need to put this into your life you need to do it today you don't need to wait until January 1 of 2020 you don't need to wait until well after Thanksgiving you don't need to wait until Monday morning when it, you know when I go back to work you need to start right now And we're going to have to have some resilience so that when the enemy steps in, (laughs) we just move him out of the way and keep on stepping. Take another step. Will you stand to your feet today? 
So here's my question today. Where are you at in your relationship with God right now and what do you need to do to start moving closer to Him? I just want you, will you just close your eyes right where you are and just ask the Holy Spirit. Just ask Him. What do I need to do with this message? What do I need to do from this day forward? What, what steps do I need to begin to take? How can I get closer to you? He'll tell you. What do I need to get rid of? What, what, do, I need to, what do I need to start doing? And if this is for you, I want to I wanna pray. I want to bring our prayer team down. I want to pray for you. So if you're here today and you'd be bold enough to say, this message was for me. I desire to be closer to God and there's some there's some steps I need to start to take. Would you let me pray for you just as a, as a, as a body right here? Would you just lift your hand if you say, this message was for me. I need to take some steps. I need to start taking some steps closer to God. God, you see every hand that is raised up. Lord, people that are acknowledging, people that are acknowledging that we want more of you. We want to be closer to you. The most important thing that we can do, God, we want an intimate relationship with We want to know you and we want you to know who we are. God, we want to stand on who you say we are and not on who other people say that we are. We want to know you personally and intimately. And so, God, would you just, would you, would you show us what to do? Just right now, in every person across this room, would you show us what to do? What step to begin taking? to get closer and closer and closer and closer to you. And Lord, I pray as we sing this song, Lord, and we declare that we want nothing else, that all we need is you, that all we desire is you, and that nothing else will do. Lord, I pray that faith would rise up in people today. I pray that faith would rise up in people today. I pray that courage would rise up in people today as we sing this song. And Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here who needs prayer, Lord, I pray that you would draw every person for prayer in Jesus' name.